I've been helping people with money for more than 20 years, but no one stumped me more than the princess. Let me spend my money the way I want and let me spend it on me. I'm here to help this princess take control of her money and her life. Over the next four weeks, she'll live on a strict cash diet and complete weekly challenges. It is going to suck. Already next week, I want to go for a massage. If this princess has what it takes, I'll transform her from spender to saver, and I'll give her up to $5,000 to help her pay down her debt. If she needs to go to the spa five times a month. I deserve to be happy. No changes, no money. Oh, 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 she's a princess. She's a princess. Meet Princess Kirsten. I'm Kirsten, and I'm currently unemployed. Kirsten was living life in the fast lane as an executive assistant at a downtown media company. But after cutbacks at work, she's jobless with a six-month severance package as consolation. And she's going to spend it. I'm going to try and live the way I currently live now, which is going out still, eating out, pampering myself. I feel like at the end of the day, I worked my ass off for 15 years, and uh, I deserve a break. One of 10 children, Kirsten spent many years taking care of her youngest siblings. A lot of responsibility was put on me, helping with the kids. I've given so much of my life and I've helped so many people that for once, let me spend my money the way I want and let me spend it on me. So now it's playtime and Kirsten doesn't care about the cost. Every time she comes home, she has a new pair of shoes or a new jacket and I think, where are you getting this money from? I deserve to be happy. Kirsten isn't a fan of cooking, so she eats almost every meal up. Thank you. All right, thank you. Kirsten's me first philosophy even comes into play when the rent is due. I'm frustrated with having to front the rent every single month. Her track record hasn't been very great since moving in with her. Kirsten is attending Teachers College over the border, spending nights in pricey hotel rooms and racking up thousands in student loans. But does she see herself as a teacher? I know growing up, I did want to be a teacher when I was a child. Kirsten might not know what she wants for her future, but she sure knows what she wants for the here and now. This is just amazing. I could do this every day. I have my massages at least twice a month. That's a minimum $100. I have hair appointments every few weeks. It looks so good. Clothes, shoes the pedicures to match the outfit, and then once a year, Botox, but as well, I'll throw in some facials. Don't even get me started. It's like, really? You need to go out and get your nails done every week? I don't understand this. And Botox? Sorry, I don't notice any difference. <laughs> when her cash runs out, she can always turn to her boyfriend, Sean. Nine times out of 10, I am that guy sitting there holding a purse and a coat, waiting for her to try something on. It's well, no, to feel I like a shoe rack. And I think slowly it's becoming an issue, especially now when we go out. I get a pay. Yeah, sorry. Kirsten dreams of marriage, while Sean wonders what the future holds. Am I gonna have to support her? And will I be able to support her having two children and myself to support as well? While Kirsten is busy pampering herself, her debts are mounting, and those closest to her are bearing the brunt. Wake up, honey. You're 30 years old. It's time to pull up your socks and act like an adult. I love Kirsten very much, but I don't want to be that codependent sort of guy that kind of picks her up when she falls down and walks her through everything. Deep in debt, with no job and no plan for the future, Kirsten's in for a shock. I'm looking forward to meeting Princess Kirsten, but she's already 45 minutes late. We are not off to a good start. Hi. Hey, Kirsten, it's nice to meet you. You too. You're late. It wasn't my fault, it was traffic. I'm sure it's never your fault. I'm gonna tell you all the truths that I see. Yeah, okay. And it'll be interesting to see whether ultimately you take those truths to heart. Okay. And do anything about them, or if you just sort of blithely decide that you're just going to ignore me, just like you ignore everybody else. Let's listen to Jules. Aww. You're afraid of Jules, eh? Why? I'm scared about what she's going to say. It's anxiety provoking. I can't go out with my friends to dinner because I know that, okay, I'm not going to have enough money to cover rent. What is that about? But she knows she has to cover your share of the rent because you don't have it already in place. 
Yeah, that sucks. Just want to yell at her and tell her, wake up. Like, this is the real world. You know, if you were living with anybody else, they wouldn't put up with this. Why has it become your sister's responsibility to carry your lazy butt? That's a good question. That's kind of embarrassing. Not so embarrassing that you'd actually change your ways, though. Let's hear what Sean says. Oh. This is the man of your life? Yeah. This is the guy you love? I know she has student loans. I know she's still going to school. And yet she still feels it's OK to spend money the way she spends money. And that's a huge concern for me. Do you think he's going to be able to keep you in the style you have become accustomed to living on on credit? Hopefully. I've set something aside for my children, and I'm going to have to you know, take away from that because my girlfriend's spending too much money. I don't want to be the sole provider for three people that are essentially children. What Sean said about taking care of three kids, like that hurt. Let's see what Katie has to say. This is your sister Katie, right? Okay. It's very sad and with this sadness brings a whole sense of anxiety and worry for a lot of us. I thought what I was doing wasn't bothering anyone else. It was an eye-opener for me. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the figures, the black and white figures. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sense of what you're spending? Nope. You're spending about 56% of your income on your needs. Your rent, mm -hmm. your transportation to and from work, basic food. Okay. Then you're spending another 167% on your wants. That's $4,952 a month on everything from your manis and your bedies to your massages, all that takeout that you do because you refuse to cook. One number that struck me was my monthly spending, how it was almost $5,000 of wants. There are all these restaurant charges as well because you love to eat out. So that's another $179 oh. in restaurant charges. I don't think that that is all you're spending on food because you actually borrow money from Sean all the time. He's probably subsidizing you to the tune of another $600 a month. So you have credit card at $400 and a student loan at $9,300. You have a line of credit at $14,000. Then your other line of credit is at $25,000, which you all managed to rack up in one year. It's almost $50,000 worth of debt. Did it not occur to you as you saw the balance going up that you were doing something wrong? I just thought that I would always have um, an income. Ah, and now you don't. Yeah. You have been earning $2,969 a month, which works out to about $42,000 a year gross. Okay. To spend what you are currently spending, you'd have to make $125,000 a year. To spend what you're spending and get your debt paid off, you'd have to make $157,000 a year. If nobody was handing you money, mm -hmm. you'd be going into debt to the tune of about $4,100 a month or $49,000 a year. Not only am I living beyond my means, but to the extent of almost five times, that is really scary. Are you prepared to change, do you think? Try. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a series of challenges to do. You do the challenges to my satisfaction. I'll give you up to $5,000, which will put a dent in your debt. Okay. Okay, you don't do the challenges, you don't get the money. If you don't have the right attitude, you don't get the money. This is about taking control of your money. Okay. And your life. Over the next month, we're gonna get you to figure out what you really want. Okay. We're gonna get you to stop sapping other people's wallets. And we're gonna get you real about money. Now go get your card. You're going on a cash debt. Coming up. Get a hard week this week. It's ridiculous. Oh, 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 she's a princess. Oh, 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 she's a princess. Kirsten is an unemployed princess planning to plow through her severance package. Kirsten lives for herself. I deserve to be happy. She takes advantage of everyone around her to cover the essentials. I mean, it's only you that's helping me out. Kirsten's family and friends have had enough. If she doesn't pay the rent, then she's going to have to leave. You can't help yourself. No one else can help you. They've decided to cut her off. Now I've got four weeks to get Kirsten to stand on her own two feet. If she succeeds, I'll give her up to $5,000 to make a dent in that debt. Give me your plastic. Gone. You will have $60. Seriously? 
it is going to suck. This is your get real challenge. Because you're living on a fixed income right now, mm -hmm. it's time for you to step up to the plate. That's the dinner plate I'm talking about. You're gonna learn to cook. I don't even wanna think about cooking. It's boring, it's pointless, and uh, it gets me nowhere. The Get Real Challenge is designed to bring a princess face to face with her biggest delusion. Kirsten needs to prioritize her spending, and that means an end to the hundreds of dollars in takeout every month. I'm sending her to this meal prep kitchen so she can learn the basics. Okay, hold on. Oh, I don't like to smell that. Kirsten's picky. This one smells like dirt. Dude, it looks like curdled milk. Yeah. But she managed to assemble a week's worth of meals for a fraction of the cost of eating out. Good job. But will she be able to cook the food she's made? You want me to get the water, you get your saucepan ready? I don't know what a saucepan is. It's like a pot. There are parts where I was just like, I don't get it, you know? I don't understand why we need to like grease this pan or whatever. She actually asked me how to turn the oven on. There you go. Look at that. Good stuff. This month, cooking at home will save Kirsten $400. With dinner out of the way, Kirsten's real challenge turned out to be all in the numbers. I gave her a copy of my analysis of her spending so she could share it with Sean. The biggest risk I felt about telling Sean about my finances was probably disappointment. Okay, so per month, this is what I spend it on. Restaurant, fast food, entertainment, beauty drugstore, beauty spa, beauty, beauty. Almost $5,000 on what you, you want to spend on. The numbers are pretty astounding. Well, I'm just saying there's a lot of money to spend on things that you don't necessarily need to do. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. Like, who needs to go to the spa five times a month? Well, it's for different things. When I was trying to explain to her, you know, you could cut this back or you could cut that back, was she actually hearing? Something's got to give. I guess. I can't be in a relationship that is going to have me having to work harder and harder to try and keep up. And I don't see that being fair, and I don't think I would put myself and my children in that position. You had a hard week this week. You and Sean broke up. Mm -hmm. And I know how hard that must be for you because this was something that you had planned to have in your life and you're attached to his kids, I can tell you that you are gonna be fine. Because one of the things that we are trying to do here is create the independence that you need. So regardless yeah. of who comes or goes in your life, it will not rock you financially while it's rocking you emotionally. That really kind of struck a chord with me. It wasn't all bad news this week. Kirsten received her severance package of six months salary and immediately caught six rent checks to her sister Jules. That's one piece of her future in place. Now it's time to look ahead. This is your set goals challenge. You are on a career hunt. Now one of the things I'm gonna do for you is help you with this goal. I have no idea what I'm gonna do moving forward. Coming up. Although you're wearing a really lovely outfit, it's more appropriate for going to a club than it is for a business environment. Oh, 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 she's a princess. Oh, 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 she's a princess. Princess Kirsten is at a major crossroad. This pampered prima donna found herself broke and single. Kirsten and I can't be in a relationship. While she's managed to live on cash and make amends to her sister, she's still unemployed and directionless. Now I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Finish my degree. Am I going to look for another job? I haven't decided yet. Kirsten is one year away from graduating Teachers College. But does she have enough passion for the career to justify going further into debt for this pricey degree? I'm right now in that teeter-totter of teaching or media, teaching or media. Kirsten's set goals challenge is designed to help her figure out what she really wants as a career. Goal setting is a process. There are five steps, and each one gets you a little closer to your dream. One of the five steps is identifying people who can help you along the way. This week, 
Kirsten met with a media temp agency to help her refine her resume and overall profile. One thing that I think that you could do to help clarify what it is that you want to do next mm -hmm. is to put an objective at the top. Yes. An objective generally will help you the most if you put out there what the next job title is that you're going for. You're leaving off some really basic generic skills that every employer wants to see for somebody at your level. Okay. We need to make it very generic so another employer can start to visualize you in their place of employment. And one final thing, and I want to address it because it's so important, is when you're meeting with a prospective employer, there's about a two to three second window where they're going to assess whether or not they think you fit in their corporate culture. Yeah. And although you're wearing a really lovely outfit, it's more appropriate for going to a club than it is for a business environment. Aside from her resume, what she really needs to do is make sure that she is perceived as a professional in the online world. So she needs to work her LinkedIn profile, she needs to work her Facebook, she needs to work any social media that she's involved with. Doing a lot of stuff, I'm getting out there. I mean, these are all positive steps. This week, Kirsten also completed an intensive assessment to identify suitable career options. And the results were eye-opening. I was just surprised about how I'm quite an introvert. Yes. And it's in direct conflict with being a teacher. Because a teacher, you have to be extremely extroverted. So where do you think you fall now? I'm definitely more interested in heading the media route. Okay. How about when you went to the agency? That was a, a big wake-up call. I fixed my LinkedIn profile, right. um, added my resume, right. added skills, and then um, my Facebook. Changed all my privacy settings, changed my photos, right. things like that. Tell me what's changed in Kirsten. Three weeks ago when I started this, yeah. I didn't know if I could do this. I um, have found this confidence. Okay, so now we come to your next challenge, which is your give back challenge. Okay. You've done a lot of taking. No, I want to see you give back. The next challenge, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, definitely. As one of 10 children, Kirsten spent her teen years helping around the house and looking after her younger siblings. As an adult, she rebelled by selfishly focusing only on herself. I've given so much of my life and I've helped so many people that for once, you know, for a few years, let me spend my money the way I want and let me spend it on me. In the Give Back Challenge, I wanted to bring Kirsten back in touch with her more generous side. So I set her up working with a charity that empowers young women. Representative Christina gave Kirsten the 411 on the charity, and Kirsten got right to it. So we have t-shirts and stickers and pencils, and we're going to be selling lemonade. Here you go. Just throw your change in there. And all the proceeds that I earn today go directly to the campaign for Because I Am a Girl. Not just because I am a girl. What it does is help women in um, various countries like Bangladesh and Africa uh, with their education and medical care. She's really doing it. Like, she's out here in the rain and she's, you know, she's really excited about it and she's really, she's really hustling people on the street and, and really trying to, to help us. Kirsten took the challenge one step further by contacting colleagues to match the donations she raised, earning top marks from me. The giving back challenge, I don't know what it was, but it almost like lit something inside of me where I just, I wanted to help others. <laughs> Coming up. So on a scale of one to five, how do you think you did? Oh, 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 she's a princess. Oh, 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 she's a princess. When I first met Kirsten, she was an unemployed, self-serving brat. I would love to be a celebrity so I could do this every day. But over the last month, despite a major emotional setback, she still managed to live on cash, become more independent, Done. and give back in more ways than one. All the proceeds go directly to the campaign for Because I Am A Girl. Before I give Kirsten my final verdict, I want to meet with her sisters to get their impressions. What do you think? I have seen an improvement in yes. her, definitely. Yes. I have. Yeah, because you got paid. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm actually very proud of her mm -hmm. because she's yeah. had a few major walls to climb over yes. in the last yeah, few weeks. Yeah. I think she's almost a completely different person in some aspects. Why don't we see what she has to say for herself? Kirsten, why don't you come join us?
The one thing that surprised me over the last month was definitely realizing how much strength I had. You've accomplished a lot this month. Thank you. Do you feel like you've accomplished a lot? I do. Your last challenge, hard. You got rained on. Yes. <laughs> you've surprised me because I didn't think you had this kind of backbone. I can definitely say the last few weeks have made me a lot more independent. Good, that was the word I wanted to hear from you. Doesn't it feel better to know that you can stand on your own two feet? It does. Yeah. You have more of a career focus. Yes. You have more of a sense of what it is you're trying to accomplish. Yes. You are less focused on your external <laughs> and you are more focused on positive relationships. Yes. So on a scale of one to five, how do you think you did? Um, I would say now five. Okay, let's see if I agree with you. This is the one I'm giving you. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> and it means a lot that, uh, you know, you feel like I've... Phenomenal. Phenomenal all the challenges. Change. Absolutely. Okay, come give me a hug. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh my gosh. Well, over the last month or six weeks, I've realized that I've saved so much money. And that to me is really impressive. But that's not all. When you are ready <laughs> to go and see all the fish in the sea, yes. you will have access to an online dating service. <laughs> I really feel like I've developed a sense of independence. I can tell, I can tell she loves to go. Shop. She's all out of control. She can't stop. Designer clothes, jewels, hair. She's throwing money everywhere. My head is spinning. Ow, 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 ow. She's a princess. She's a princess. Modern day princess.